Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Fighting in the southeast of Angola, getting to know Gabinda well. There are stories we can tell about Maputo and Southwest, but living is to serve our country best. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Men who are telling hero stories, and maybe some of them are true. But we don't talk, we do. Compass rose to lead the way, the laurel dagger and maroon beret. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. We don't need receptions or no medals. No one need to know the job we do. We know who is who, and we know we were there. Many of them talk, but no one did. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Someone once said living becomes dearer After you nearly had to die Though even danger may ride high We'll keep striving for the truth To do a proudly orange, white and blue Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. And if I can have my life all over, and someone ask me what I want to be, now that is clear to see, I just want it all this way. The laurel dagger and maroon beret. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Commission on your tears, we cross the firing line. Romeo Mike, Romeo Mike, this is Giant, do you copy? Romeo Mike, this is Giant, do you copy? How does it look down there? Romeo Mike, it's getting pretty rough. Giant, can you give me white fuss? Romeo Mike, stand by. Romeo Mike, this is Giant. I got your visual. Romeo Mike, I'm standing by to you. Roger, I'll be there in a couple of mics. In the meantime, give him help. and bloody fight One that took us all day Halfway through the night According to the papers The bloodiest ever fixed Since the war got started In 1966 Since the war got started In August 66 
Sunday or she velo five Ricky at the front to Ricky and the parabets the rattle lady wants we drove on through that afternoon we drove on through that night so it's the most fears and bloody fight so it's the most fears and bloody fight we crossed the border to Angola the Monday it was late I saw a year old true his determination on their face I felt so very sorry for the enemy who comes the South Africans were there with the Rickies at the front the South Africans were there with the Rickies at the front. It was 12 o'clock on that Saturday when we drove into the fight. With Buffalo's Caspers rattles, we hit them with all our might. I felt so very sorry for the enemy. The South Africans were there with the Rickies at the front. The South Africans were there with the Rickies at the front. We had the enemy in a fix. We had them on the run. We chased them over a shore where one on one gun them down. But the victory has a price tag in its struggle and its right. And 13 young boy soldiers had to pay the highest price. And today, as we sing this song of their brave and courageous fight, we think of 13 youngsters who went to heaven late that night. It's the heart of the Caribbean, Red Hot Rum. Duncan's mother brought him up on rum and coke. Duncan's mother brought him up on rum and coke. Duncan's mother brought him up and sent him to the nearest pub. Inky pinky Red Hot Rum. Oh, beer, beer plus, four drift equals rum and coke. Oh, beer, beer plus, four drift equals rum and coke. Oh, beer, beer visited for drift, not a drop the day he left. Pinky, pinky, red hot rum. Rima got geplukt last night on rum and coke. Rima got geplukt last night on rum and coke. Rima got geplukt last night and got himself in a hell's a fight. Pinky, pinky, red hot rum. Three cent eighty is gehak op rum and coke. Three cent eighty is gehak op rum and coke. Three cent eighty is gehak, raak getrek en maak dan Inky Pinky Red Hot Rum. Speak of proper likes it to one rum and coke. Speak of proper likes it to one rum and coke. Speak of proper likes it to got wrecked today at the Malibu Inky Pinky Red Hot Rum. Maak nie saak wat die groot pas sê, da's rum en coke. Maak nie saak wat die groot pas sê, da's rum en coke. Maak nie saak wat die groot pas sê, vanaan drink ons, ons ons doods te lay. Inky Pinky Red Hot Rum. Only one drink for the boys of the bluff is rum and coke. Only one drink for the boys of the bluff is rum and coke. Only one drink for the boys of the bluff. Watch our goals, it makes them rough. Pinky, pinky, red hot rum. Only one drink for the boys of the bluff is rum and coke. Only one drink for the boys of the bluff is rum and coke. Only one drink for the boys of the bluff. Watch our goals, it makes them rough. Pinky, pinky, red hot rum. It's the heart of the Caribbean. 
red hot rock O shakati O shakati O shakati mambulant dus die mooiste plek op aarde, o Shekati Wambuland. Ruakana, Ruakana, Ruakana Wambuland. Dus die plek met die meeste water, Ruakana Wambuland. O Shivello, o Shivello, o Shivello Wambuland. Dus die plek met die meeste vlieën, o Shivello Wambuland. O Katopi, o Katopi, o Katopi Wambuland. Dus die plek met die meeste perken, o Katopi Wambuland. O Inanna, o Inanna, o Inanna Wambuland. Dus die plek met die minste water, o Inanna Wambuland. O Ndangwa, o Ndangwa, o Ndangwa Wambuland. Dus die plek waar die vloos is laat, o Ndangwa Wambuland. O Ngwediwa, o Ngwediwa, o Ngwediwa Wambuland. Dus die tilplek van terroristen, Ongwediwa Wambuland. O Shekati, O Shekati, O Shekati Wambuland. Dus die mooiste plek op aarde, O Shekati Wambuland. Seus pelilos pelilos Seus pelilos ma pelilos se cozete Seus pelilos pelilos Seus pelilos ma pelilos se cozete Salane 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 ve ma Se ane she ya se ane she ya te salane 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 ve ma Gentlemen, a time has come, a time has gone. It is now the time we must say goodbye to you all. It's been great to be with you. Manele, ani manene kasi. Lefiki le eloli pa, lokuba sa shugani. Begumlandi ubanani, amnani. Bajo, chipinga cho shika, chipinga cho pira, zava zavu diri rote, onea, salani zavu. Salani 
szeregi szeregi dan an pas lop ons en pas bly ons getrou staan ons bank vast om ons veilig te hou vir my en vir jou helder oor dag of deur die donker na
Many men have tried for the laurel dagger, for the wings and the compass rose. Many men came for the test. Many failed and some came close, but only one got the compass rose. Laurel dagger and compass rose, wings and maroon beret. He made it today. He did it his way. He's fighting for the RSA. Laurel dagger and compass rose, and wings and maroon beret. He's walking proud. He's walking tall. He's fighting for one and all. Many men tell tales of war, but those who talk know nothing then, and those who don't, they are soldiers' men. Many men came for the test. Many failed and some came close, but only one got the compass rose. Laurel dagger and compass rose, wings and maroon beret. He made it today. He did it his way. He's fighting for the RSA. Laurel dagger and compass rose, and wings and maroon beret. He's walking proud. He's walking tall. He's fighting for one and all. Train to start where others fall. From land and sea, from out the sky, prepare to live and die. Only men know what it takes. For the laurel dagger, the maroon beret, to fight and win, you know, come what may. Laurel dagger and compass rose, wings and maroon beret. He made it today. He did it his way. He's fighting for the RSA. Laurel dagger and compass rose, wings and maroon beret. He's walking proud. He's walking tall. He's fighting for one and all. Laurel dagger and compass rose, wings and maroon beret. He made it today. He did it his way. He's fighting for the RSA. Laurel dagger and compass rose, the wings and maroon beret. He's walking proud. He's walking tall. He's fighting for one and all. It's the heart. Of the Caribbean. Red. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And those oaks in the corner, shut up, please. I'm speaking. Evening, everybody. Um, my name is Mark Natalevitz. We're not starting yet, but we're going to start at 18.30. And so those of you who need to grab a drink or maybe go to the bathroom, um, the bathrooms are through these doors up the stairs over there. And if you're tall, just duck because the ceiling's a bit low. And don't push. Take turns nicely. But anyway, so ladies and gents, bathrooms through that um, door over there up the stairs, drinks in the corner there, and we'll start at 18.30. Thank you very much for your um, patience. Okay, 
Mitchell Tim.
after that, uh, we will just wrap it up with one or two other things. So I'm going to show you this. You can't read where you are, but the short and the long of uh, Fred is that he, he was born in 55, and he did uh, his uh, selection in 75. Uh, sorry, he joined uh, the, the army then, National Service 75, but he did his selection in 76. Um, then he went to, to Langebaan with four reconnaissance regiment, uh, and then he was in that period. He also went to the military academy. Um, <laughs> then <laughs> he went from uh, corporal to <laughs> lieutenant colonel in four recce, and in January '94 he was transferred. Uh, sorry for the video, he was transferred to the Special Forces HQ as uh, SO, SO one Ops, and he served in uh, Army Headquarters. In 1996, he was transferred as, uh, to be the OC of one reconnaissance regiment in Durban. In the same year, the unit uh, was uh, closed down, and uh, then he became the officer commanding from, uh, sorry, 97 to 99, of uh, Group 9 in Peter Marisburg. Uh, in April 99, he left the military and he set up a business uh, up to 2004 um, in the security domain. Uh, he worked in both Iraq and Afghanistan uh, until 2012. And then currently, uh, as from 2017, he's in uh, counter uh, poaching and or security services in the low felt uh, next to the Kruger National Park. That's where he spent most of his time right now. Fred's going to introduce us into Operation Coolidge, and then we'll wrap it up uh, thereafter. Fred, thank you very much for being here. You can give him a, a nice hand of applause. Thank you very much. Okay, can you hear me? Um, I'm going to start with Operation Coolidge. In 1985, the Angolan forces um, built a, uh, build a, a, a big offensive against UNITA, uh, which was in Mavinga, in the southeast of Angola. Uh, the offensive turned around 10 kilometers from Mavinga, and UNITA decided, no, they have to do something about this. Then in 1986, uh, it was decided that um, CSI, which is Chief of, uh, uh, um, Chief of Staff Intelligence, decided to uh, allocate some people to UNITA, South African Defense Force people to, uh, to UNITA, to support them in um, curbing this, this offensive from, from the um, Angolan forces. Um, it worked and it helped. In 1986 also, four reconnaissance regiment uh, did an operation in, uh, in Namib where we um, blew the um, uh, fuel depots um, and deprived the Angolan forces of the necessary fuel to attack Mavinga. Then in uh, February 1987, UNITA decided they're going to attack that bridge, which is the bridge that goes over the Quito Carnival River. Um, they went down with a, a little inflatable boat with 12 bags, sandbags, with 3.5 kilograms of explosives in it. It was two engineers, two commando guys, and, and two rowers. There was no engine. They, they rowed down the river. They uh, got to the river, but never ever did they um, provide for the flow of the river, the, 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 uh, the, the, the current that, that took them. But eventually they got under the bridge, but on the western, uh, western side instead of the eastern side. They wanted to be on the eastern side, but the current was too strong. So they got there, and while they were busy fixing the, 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 the cortex, which is the explosive lines to set off the explosives. The um, engineer 
fell off the boat. The boat was swept away underneath him. The splash awake a, a guard on the, on the side of the, of, the, of the river. He saw the splash and he started shooting into the river. The rest of the team got out of the river and they moved away. And unfortunately, that operation was unsuccessful. Then in May 1987, it was decided that Foreki was go and do a reconnaissance on that bridge and decide exactly um, what we're going to do about the bridge. A team of two, two divers was taken. They were dropped 17, 17 kilometers from the bridge with an with a inflatable kayak. Uh, Italian inflatable kayak with the necessary stuff and they, ro they rowed down the river. They, um, just before the bridge, they, f they found a cable that went uh, over, the, over the river and made the deduction that this cable here is for boats to ferry from the one side to the other side. So it's a fairly thick cable. They then got to the bridge. They... Um, did all the reconnaissance on the bridge, took the dimensions of the pillars and everything, and they then swim, swim from there down another 17 kilometers where they were uh, picked up by uh, a team that were waiting for them and then flew back out. Um, they came back to the unit, uh, debrief was done and everything, and in, uh, the third of, on the 3rd of July in 1987, Special Forces HQ gave the green light and, says, and said, okay, this operation must take place. Uh, we must blow the bridge because we want to stop the offensive um, of the, of the um, Angolan forces. Now, Quitu Canaval, which is the little town that's just um, east of the river, is, uh, is the logistical base from where they attacked the uh, UNITA forces and the South African forces that at that stage um, supported them were in, were in the area. It was then decided that the operation should not take place before August. And we have to wait for the dark moon phase of August to, to attack the bridge. Um, there was a lot of preparation that took place. We had to prepare the, 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 the charges that we're going uh, to use uh, to blow the pillars of the bridge. And um, we had to decide uh, which uh, um, kayaks we're going to use uh, because the Italian kayak, the inflatable kayak, was not um, the, the right one to use because it made 360 turns. You cannot, you cannot um, maneuver it in the river. And we used the old um, naughty kayak um, for that because it's got a rudder in the back and you can, you can steer it properly. Also that we had to take in consideration is in this preparation phase, we prepared. We, we did all the rowing, we did all the swimming, we did everything, but that was in the Burke River up in the Western Cape. There's no crocodiles in that river. <laughs> um, everything went well. And then on the, the 22nd of August, we left uh, to go up to um, Rundu. Um, we went to Fort Foot, which is a one recce base. And from there, we started, uh, we started with our final rehearsals. We went to uh, Dereco, which is a, a base further up in the river, um, in, in, in the, the Quitu River. We got there. And we, we did a, a, a few exercises in a crocodile-infested river. Now, to, tell, to say to you, it was, we were wreckage, we're not, we're not scared. That's something we don't know, because we seaborne operators, we work in the sea. We know, that, we know the sharks and that. We don't worry about them. And the sea is big. This river is this wide, and we don't know how many crocodiles in that river. So in the night there, when we swim... We always had the boat on standby. Um, and as you swim, you see these little red eyes everywhere. So you just say, hey, come closer, come closer. So that's the way we trained. 
we got it, and we said, ah, oh, no, this is nothing. We'll get through this. So on the, the 24th, yeah, the 26th of um, August, we flew to Mavinga, uh, to Mavinga with a C-130, landed there, and then the helicopters picked us up, and they took us to uh, a, a forward attack HQ of uh, five ready, um, which is the, the bush operators. They dropped us there. We stayed there uh, for a day with them, and then we were uh, transported to a forward base of UNITA, and um, it was nice to see one of uh, our own, own uh, Defence Force people there. It was one of the liaison officers that was uh, um, allocated to UNITA. And they from there, they took us further. And they took us um, 24 kilometers up north of the, of the bridge. On the... 26, we started preparing all our equipment, and then 20, 30 that night, we started rowing, started rowing down the river. Now, the whole aim was to go down with the, go down with the, with the kayaks in the, in the river until a safe spot where we decide that it's safe enough here and it's close enough to the bridge that we can just start swimming and going on from there. The Anton Bjergman, okay, I was the team leader, Anton was the, was the second in command, and he was, he was leading us, and he was also the, 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 the team leader of the, of the reconnaissance team, so he knows the river. So down we row, and he said, okay, this is the place, here we pulled all the kayaks in, we tied them to each other, and we put the phosphorus grenade, one in the front, one in the back, and then we tied it with cortex, and with a timer. And then we left the kayaks and we carried down the river. Now, during the reconnaissance, they used uh, like a corkscrew um, that they, that they um, screw into, this, into the, uh, the bottom or into the, the, uh, the, the bank of the river. And then from there, they can move and they can work on the pillars. That worked for them. But it's a small team and they can only work up to there. The flow of that river... I'll come to that now. It was, was more than what any, anybody ever thought. The time, for the, the time by the reconnaiss from the reconnaissance done to the time that we did the operation was a total different river. Um, so we, in the, in the, in the, we could not carry those cork screws because it, it, it started getting too heavy. We, we, we were laden with load with uh, lots of stuff that we had to carry and you had to swim with that. So we decided, okay, we're going to leave that. And we decided to use a rope, a long rope. That's the width of the river. And we've measured it, which team is going to hit, going to uh, attack which pillar. And then the was marked, and it was say, okay, that's, that team is there, that team is there, and that team is there. So myself and, and, and of course the vet, we were um, on, the, on the western side, and we were supposed to attack the, the bridge, bridge on the western side. So we started, we, we got to a point and Anton said, okay, now we're about 1.5 1, 1 kilometers from the bridge, and that's the, that's the distance we decided, okay, that's where we're going to use the rope. We forgot that there was another angle in the river, a turn in the river. So we rolled out the, we, we rolled out the rope, and we tied onto the rope, and we started swimming. And it was like nothing. The team on that side, they just went forward because they were in a strong, stronger current. Myself and Kurs in the end, we were the, the tail of the snake. So we were just going like this. <laughs> then you here, then you there, then you there. And then I left the rope. And I let the people know, leave the rope. So we stopped. We uh, came, came with the rest of the team. We pulled in the rope and we chucked it in the, river, in the, in the, in the reeds and we say, leave the rope. And I said to the people, okay, now, it's every team on its own. So you go, you move, you move into the middle of the river, and you swim, and you go for, you go for the pillar that you have to go. At that stage, my diving equipment was flooded, so I couldn't use my, my rebreather. Um, but I still had a, a buoyancy compensator, and I could use that 
um, to, to do limited dives. Um, we, got, we got through, we, we got to the, to, uh, but at this stage, myself and Poos were totally on the wrong side of the river. We were on the eastern bank, and we were supposed to be on the western bank. So I said to him, we go for the first set of pillars. We, there's no way we're going to get back to that, that side. So we started moving forward, and the next moment, I just felt I'm stopped. So we feel, we feel, 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 and then there's an a, a obstacle built in the river with a barbed wire. They put it right through the river to the other side. So now, I don't know how to get through this thing, so I started going down, and then I see, okay, I can go underneath. So I went underneath, I got to the other side, and I said to Kurs, go underneath. So he went underneath, so now we're on this side. Said, okay, let's go for the pillar. In the meantime, on this side, we can hear the commotion. We can do this thing, because they had tins with, um, with uh, uh, stones in it. So when you, once you hit that thing, it goes, kla, 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 kla. and we knew that the people had been warned. There's something, there's something coming. So myself and Kurs went to the, to, the, to, to the first set of pillars, and as we got there, all hell break, broke loose. Um, I just see the, the, the bullets goes into the water. I turned on my back to see where, where, where it's coming from. And the next moment, I just felt like a pinprick in my, in my arm. And of course, just pulled me through. So we didn't, we didn't stop at the pillow. We went right through. Of course, the water was about that deep. If you sit on your bum, your head would stick out. Um, so we went out. The rest... Uh, Two teams were successful um, with, their, with their charges that they, put, uh, that they uh, placed on the bridge. And the others also had uh, difficulties with all the obstacles in the water. So they placed their charges on the, on the obstacles. Anton, of course, uh, he had a charge on his wrist that he had to put on that uh, cable that goes over the water. But when they got there, too high to, to, to reach. So he decided, okay, he's going to go carry on. Um, they got through and they got on the other side then he realized oh I still got this thing and it's armed so he just took it off and he chucked it also in the reeds after the bridge we, 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 um, get, we got together and I counted the people and we were only, only 10 we were originally and I said uh oh two guys missing before going in I, I um, extended the, the rendezvous time um, from, from uh, 1.30 to 3.30 because we were way after, after the time we were supposed to be. So I said, okay, we get together uh, at 3.30 the morning on that side. So we waited, we waited, and it was, uh, it was 3.30. I said, okay, we have to move. We, we two guys short, so we started moving down. Um, and then we went to the second, second um, rendezvous point, by that time, we were way behind the time that, that was for that rendezvous point. Uh, the 10 of us then got out of the water because it started getting daybreak. Um, we got out of the water and we um, tried to make communica communications with the team that's supposed to pick us up at the, at the su south end. Um, We couldn't use because the, 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 the radio bag, the watertight bag, it, it, it had a tear in it, and so the radio was useless. We couldn't use it. Um, at, at that stage, they then um, patched my wound and everything, and I had to make a decision. I said to the guys, let's get in the water and go, because we, ca we cannot sit the whole day here waiting. In the meantime, we hear the helicopters. So they've put helicopters in the air, and they were looking for us. I just said, get in the water and let's go. On the one side of the river, there was a very high, uh, um, um, high ground and, and, a, and a river bank. And I said, let's go on that side and we stay close to the, close to the high ground. And that's because if there's anybody there, they, it's not going to be easy to see us there because we are right at the bottom. If we're on the other side of the river, they're going to pick us up easily. So we swam down and we carried on. Um, and then at one stage... There was like a, a, a swirl in the water. Uh, now, I was swimming on my back. I was the last, last guy. The other guys were swimming in the front. 
They were looking out what is going on the front. I was the last guy, and I, I was swimming on my back, looking, what, uh, looking at the back. And the next moment, I just saw what I don't want to see, is the crocodile. And uh, I called my buddy, Kurs. I said, Kurs, there's something here. He turned around, and he says, oh, okay, okay. Immediately, hand grenade, ready. <laughs> Pin out already. <laughs> I said, okay, let's go. Now we swim, 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 swim. And at the stage, he said to me, he said to me, okay, stop kicking. I said, why? He said, because we're calling the crocodile. Okay, I said, okay, we stop kicking. Lying with my legs straight like this. And then when that mouth went open like this, Kurs lobbed the grenade and it hit it on the nose. And it came back to us. <laughs> <coughs> so that's when you start kicking. And the next, the next moment, I just felt something, something is stopping me. And that crocodile has bit the flipper right in front of my toes. It got hold of it there. So luckily I could get my foot out. And then we left and we we, we gone. We went, <laughs> went, we went with speed. We, catch, we, we caught the guys in the front. <laughs> so then from there, it was like another two-hour swim. We had some other... Um, uh, uh, fights next to the, in the river, but we didn't get involved. And then again, two guys disappeared. Um, but then just around the corner, I, I, we found the, the team waiting for us. We got out of the water. I was attended to. And now we're waiting. Now I've reported four guys missing. Luckily, the two guys that were with us, they just went into the reeds, and they waited there. And they waited for dark, and then after dark, they came out, and they argued with the, with the team. And um, so there were still two guys left. At that stage then from Special Forces HQ, it was decided, it was decided that um, us 10 must be um, um, uh, evacuated to Fort Foot um, so that the debrief can, can take place there. Uh, so then uh, Renier Hugo from Five Reiki, he then acted as the team leader and he, he took us out, and the next day, we walked right through the night because we can hear the people, we can hear the helicopters. So we walked, and we had to duck and dive. We were quite a big force with the UNITA people with us, and um, I think it was about 12 o'clock that day, the helicopters picked us up, and we went to Fort Foot. And that is the, the run of, of, of uh, Operation Coolidge. Um, that is the breach that we had to attack. Okay, next in. Uh, is as you look at the pictures on the right-hand side, that's the, the town is on, 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 on that side. No, I'm, li I'm lying. It's on the, on the left side, the, as I'm looking at it, on the left-hand side. We came from the top, as you can see. There's a, there's a, there's a turn in the river there, and that turn... That's where the river, just the current just started going. So people ended up where they didn't want to end up, and they just carried on. Okay, next slide. That's the bridge after we were finished with it. It wasn't demolished totally, but it was demolished enough so that they couldn't um, use the bridge 100%. They had, to, they had to use a ferry to get logistics and stuff over. Um, it was... Successful to such, a, uh, to such an extent that the forces that were on the other side of the river was almost annihilated by the South African forces and UNITA. Okay? And that's what the bridge looked like today. Okay. I will speak to you. Or now? Anton. Oh, yeah, first the video. Okay. Uh, we're going to show you a video now about Anton. And then thereafter, I'll talk about Anton. All right, let's see uh, if you can watch the video. We, good, we need good sound. It's coming. The Angolan operations depended on logistic support moving across the bridge over the Quito River. This became the target of Operation Coolidge, launched by South Africa's special forces. A team from 4 Reconnaissance Regiment were sent on a mission to destroy the bridge. 
We were flown in from South Africa to Rundu. Uh, we started preparing there. Uh, we actually did our rehearsals in the Quito River itself, but much to the south with the crocodiles in the river, getting used to them. And the night with last light, we got into the river with all our equipment, with the explosives and everything, and we started rowing down the river. We were a team of 12 kayaking down the river. And up to a point when we decided the bridge is pretty close, we disembarked, placed charges on the kayaks to blow that up for no evidence. We disembarked too early because it was still a long way to the bridge. Nevertheless, we kept on swimming. Eventually, I would say about 75 meters, maybe 100 meters before the bridge, you could see it for the first time because it was so heavy with fog. We went on to our oxy gears, our rebreathers, and went down in a body pair. On the right-hand side, the water is fairly shallow, and some of the guys, their backpacks were showing above the water. And at some point, um, somebody on the bridge, some of the guards picked us up, and uh, they started shooting into the water. Uh, I could clearly see the bullets going into the water, and the next moment I just felt something pricked me in the, in, the, in the right upper arm. And it felt like a pin prick, but it must have been also the adrenaline that you don't know that you've been hit. Myself and Les were, were delayed um, in placing our charges because the current was very strong, and we were struggling in placing these charges at, at a certain depth. By that time, the rest of the team had already done their work, but and they carried on swimming. The charges detonated, and the bridge was damaged enough to prevent transport crossing. Anton and Les missed the first RV, and by daybreak decided to hide from the Russian helicopters searching overhead. The rest of the team made it to safety. When we reached the rendezvous point, there were some of our guys waiting for us, and a doctor was there waiting for me as well. Immediately gave me some attention, so we were all together again, except for the two guys that we lost the previous night. At about six o'clock in the evening at uh, sunset, we decided we'll get back into the water, and we continued swimming down the river to get to the emergency RV. The soldiers were not the only ones to get into the water. And the next moment, this crocodile grabbed me from behind between my legs and took me down to the, the bottom, rolled me around, and just jerked me around for a while. And then eventually went to stood still, and you can hear this river just flowing past you. And I thought to myself, is this the way I'm going to die? Got my demand valve into my mouth, started breathing. I managed to get hold of my knife that was on my right leg and started stabbing behind me about three or four times. And the fourth time I found a soft spot, and as I pushed my knife in, this crocodile left me. I managed to get up to the surface, and by that time, we were late for the emergency RV as well, due to this attack now. As we came around the corner, there was this little red asylum light, and I thought, gosh, the guys are still here, and they, they've waited for us. So it was great to see the guys. The doctor was there, he started treating me. And about an hour later, we took off to the uh, RV point where the choppers picked us up the next morning. Okay. Now, up, up to today, I'm glad I'm not Anton. Um, the two of them, they placed their charges on the, on the bridge and they swam, swam further. Anton realized he still had uh, the um, cable charge on him. He threw that away and they carried on swimming, knowing that they way too late for the, for the uh, rendezvous point. Um, but they carried on swimming until it started getting light, first light, and then they decided to get out of the river, and they were lying there the whole day, again. I don't know, um, it must have been horrible in that sun, uh, in, inside the reeds, you're in a wetsuit, it's hot, it's, it's, uh, they got limited water, apart from the water in the river, um, and we only carried an energy bar each. So 
And as Anton said to me, that was the nicest thing he ever ate in his life, was that energy bar. Um, then when it uh, was last light, they decided to carry on swimming, and they swam. And in Anton's words, he thinks it's exactly the same place where the crocodile tried to attack me, um, where the crocodile attacked him. Now imagine that's his legs. He's swimming, and here's the crocodile coming and bite him on the inside of his legs. Uh, there. Take him down, roll him. He takes a, he, luckily he could get hold of his knife and he started stabbing. He said three, four times, the knife just jumps back, jumps back. And then eventually he got the soft spot and he knew he's, he hit it. The next moment, he felt that he's loose. So he went up and Les was looking for him because they didn't swim with their body lines on. So Les was looking for him, asking, where were you? Where were you? He said, no, I just went down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so they went out the water. Anton told him he's been uh, bitten by a crocodile. They went, they went out the water and they checked. They tried to patch what they can patch. And now they have, now they have to make a decision. Are we going back here, back into the water, or are we walking both of them was not list to go back into the, into the water. They decided they're going to walk. So they walked like 10, 10 meters. Anton says, no, I can't walk. It's too sore. I said, okay, well, can't go into the water here. Yeah, they had to go back. And they had to go to the water where they went in, knowing there's a crocodile there. So they got back in the water and they start swimming and they were happy. Nothing happened. And as Anton says there, they came around the corner and they saw the uh, red silum light and uh, the team picked them up and then they came out. The two of us ended up in Rundu in the hospital and um, the big brass flew in and we had to debrief them. Um, and then from there we flew back to um, Langoban, uh, our unit, and um, a week or two later we were called... Um, to, to the parliament in Cape Town. We went there and uh, the president, uh, Pervia Bota, wanted to debrief. He wanted to know exactly what happened. So we debriefed him and he was very happy and he said that was a, big, uh, that was a success story. So from there we went back and then uh, General Gelner Hel phoned um, said to Colonel Fenter, those 12 people has, uh, have to be awarded with the Honoris Crux. And that was the biggest operation and the most Honoris Cruxes that was issued to one specific operation. Um, also, this was one of the only operations where four reconnaissance regiment operated not in the sea, but in the river. It was the first one and the last one that we did there. Thank you. I'm happy. You were backlash, huh? <laughs> you were an operation backlash, sir, but you're still working. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask Mark to just say something about the item that's on auction tonight. It's one item only, it's going to be quick and fast. It's uh, the Croc Hunter opportunity. So here you are, Mike. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kali. Is the mic in the right place? <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, I think the way Fred tells the story, it just sounds like he's telling a story about how he went down to the shops. But, you know, um, this was a, a hell of a story. These guys were very far behind enemy lines, all on their own in the river. And as Fred says, not just dealing, not just dealing with the enemy and the mission that they had to undertake, but also dealing with... Um, Crocodiles. I was going to say reptiles, but uh, crocodiles, yeah. They are reptiles. And um, the reason why we chose this story um, to launch the whole, the, the brand use agreement with Sharp Edge is because this story, more than any other story that I can think of, demonstrates how it's important uh, to not just be a proper operator or um, 
a loan operator, some guys are selling courses nowadays, I see loan operators, but a loan operator without the right tool is like going to be in big trouble. And I think that Anton, um, Fred said he was lucky to be able to reach his knife. I think that he had a knife there for a reason. And if you don't have a knife with you and the right knife and you're not uh, ready to use it, then you might find yourself in trouble. So the knife that... Um, that uh, Anton used was a diving knife, which can also be referred to as a boot knife. And we've made a few replicas of that particular knife, which we're calling the Croc Hunter. This particular one here that we've inlaid in a box, beautifully inlaid in the box with actual crocodile leather here. Gert went out and killed a crocodile. Where's Gert? <laughs> this is all that le is left of the crocodile, is this little square after Gert got him. And um, in order to remember Fred and their story and Anton Bjergman and their man to raise some money for the Special Forces Association, we'd like to auction off this, this particular knife in a presentation box. Okay. Um, as it happens, uh, somebody last night heard about it and phoned me and said that they're already putting in a bid and they, they're sure that none of you will beat the, the bid that they're putting in. And the bid that they put in is uh, for 10,000 rand for this, for this particular knife. So... Kali, I think this is where you step in, yeah? So, uh, in context, South African Special Forces uh, were often um, deployed to avoid, um, you know, logistical um, routes, block it, um, and get the enemy not to be able to bring in the ammunition and all the food and all the fuel and all. Therefore, all these operations on the western coast of Angola, blowing up those harbors, the ships in the harbors, and all of those kind of stuff. And then this bridge was very critical because uh, it played a key role, you know, for people to go uh, forward and backwards. So great operation, great planning, but as you heard, uh, things doesn't work exactly the way you planned it. It's hard to do work in another country, and if you have to work only at night, which is always the case, then uh, there's so many things that uh, can just uh, become that challenge. So great story, great insight. Thank you, Fred. Uh, this knife is an auction tonight. There's a reserve now of 10K that you all know about, and uh, we obviously can sell it for more than that. So you're welcome to make me an offer. Take note. I'm not an auctioneer. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not, I can't entertain you with this. You have to be quick and fast. Make huge jumps between the thousands and the thousands. I mean, I, I, I don't know how to handle the in-between stuff. I'm not trained for it. All right? I know some of you have a bit of a conscience that if you buy the thing and you shouldn't have, then you have to go home and explain it to your wife. It's not complicated. Buy the damn thing. It's an irrational decision, and it's very emotional. And by the way, the people showed you a picture of the old wreckage tonight, and you felt sorry for them. So tell your wife it's really, you, you made a mistake. Just, just confess. Don't try, don't try to go home and to justify it and rationalize it and, uh, and think that you'll get away with it, all right? You'll, you'll get destroyed in that process. It's all about empowerment. You want to empower her the next morning to explain to her other friends that your husband actually came back last night and confessed. And he said he was sorry for the thousands and thousands that he took from the family heritage. Do I need to motivate this more or do you get the picture? All right, I'm playing with you. Uh, help me. We've got 10,000. Uh, you just have to raise your hand so that I can actually see it. We've got 11, 11 uh, 12. Is that what you said? Okay. 11, say again, just say again, you guys are playing with me, uh, give me more than 11, we're on 11 over here, 11,000, where's the money going, it's very easy, it goes into the organization, by the way, this year, uh, Christo Rulofsa, our chairman, and his team in the different fort structures all over the country, up to Dubai, they spend about uh, three, four hundred thousand bucks. I think we've spent another three hundred thousand uh, on members in support of. Guys and girls, we're living in tough times. We're living in the COVID times. We're living in times where, where, where people sometimes struggle with, uh, you know, 
not only work, but with medical issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, I remember the other day, four or five years ago, we bought a wheelchair for one of our people that's uh, uh, quadruplech and uh, Pat Monaring, and the bed alone was 100,000 bucks. That's what we do with the money. So give us more. Thank you for the 11. Hoi. I've got 11. I need 12, I need 13, I need 50. You want to go to 15? <laughs> We've got 11. We've got 11,000. There's the knife. 11, 11, 11. Anybody? Nobody. 11 for the first time. 11 for the second time. Is that correct? 11 for the last time. It's yours. Thank you very much. Give him a hand. <laughs> on the evening, yeah. On the evening, um, the team that evening. Let me go there quickly. So these are some of the other items that's already Ricky branded. You can see them over here, and this, this, these branded e items. It will be expanded to more items and not only knives as we go forward in our relationship with Stan and team. So this is a small but effective start. And this is getting going not only locally but also globally. So the brand is going to get bigger and bigger as we, if we can. And we're going to exploit this as best as we can. And if you look at all those knives that's already there, then you see similar stuff that's really smart. It's really smart. There they are. You're welcome to discuss. That one is a kitchen knife, and my wife said, Olga, to Stan, you cannot do this if there's not the best kitchen knife in the world. Who of you know the, the Victorinox kitchen knives already? You've used them. Confirm it's one of the best knives ever to buy. So tell your wife, this is Tani Olga who said this is the best knife in business, and uh, you will be in good company. Um, we're done with that. We're done with that. Uh, you want to say something, I want to just, I'm going to leave you the two slides, but I'm not going to talk about them. Um, we could have asked if there's an uh, urgent question on this, if time allow. Um, but we don't have to. Can I just leave you with this? Sorry, I'm f messing around. There it is. So that's the team. But please acknowledge the following. And always remember this. Behind that team, who all got a lot of Scrooge medals for that operation, behind that team is a huge chunk of other operators and or uh, support staff uh, rendering services to the team to be able to do the work. You know what I'm talking about? So if you, if you want to understand this kind of work, you must understand that behind them is others. Logistics, admin, signal, personnel, everybody's in the plot. What you also need to understand is that none of the special forces operations ever could have been done if it weren't for the support of the Air Force and the Navy more specific. Yes, the Army also, but there were two entities that always got involved with special forces operations and therefore we salute them big time. But we also acknowledge the medical component who was always there with their doctors and other medical staff to, uh, to, to, to help. I don't know if you know this, but at least 50% of the Special Force operators in that time were either wounded once or twice. So it's not as if a lot of people didn't get injured and they always needed attention. And we had some of the smartest doctors uh, in the business, some of them here tonight, to support us. Martin Kelly, I saw Stefan Rawlings. They're all here. Stefan, Colleen, daar is hy daarachter. Ola van der Spey, wie is hy? So these guys, they were the heroes, so the Navy, and so the Air Force, and so the support staff. You can give them a hand. I'm going to hand back to Mark to just say thank you and explain how the, the, the rest of the evening will, will flow from here. So thank you, everybody. Maybe a last uh, hand for both Stan and Fred, our two guest uh, speakers.
Is there maybe one, one serious burning question that somebody wants to ask? Anton's legs, fine. Thank you. Another burning question. Which part were you thinking of? Okay. Other burning questions. Other burning questions. I think we're done. I think it was a great uh, evening. We're getting tired standing. Uh, we're going to socialize. We're going to spend time together. I'm going to hand over to Mark. Mark. Thank, thank you, Kali. I'd just like to thank all of you um, for joining us here tonight and supporting us. Um, and especially also to Stan Gordon and the Sharp Edge family for supporting the Special Forces. And as you can see, um, as I say in Yiddish, this is not Rachmanis purchases because you want to support the Rekis. This is good quality products. And anything you buy here tonight, a percentage will go to the Special Forces. For the rest of the evening, um, in an orderly fashion, please, you can uh, don't, don't rush the table. There's rat packs available for all of you over there and more drinks in the corner. And you can look out for the Special Forces guys here and uh, talk to them a bit and ask them questions. And I'd just like to thank everyone for being here. Have a good evening. Thanks.